This video looks at the mapping of the decontour and how this relates to encirclements. So by now, students know how to construct a complete Nyquist diagram. So what we need to do is move on to formal feedback loop analysis and design. But before we can do that, we have to understand what we mean by encirclements. And that's what this video will do. It will introduce encirclements and how these link to left half plane and right half plane factors in a transfer function. Once we've done this, uh, the next video can move on to feedback loop stability. So first then, what is an encirclement? So here's some questions. Which of the points below are encircled and which are not? And what is the direction of the encirclement? Now hopefully you will consider this question is quite easy. This cross here is clearly encircled. You can see if you put a man, or a woman indeed, on this point here and they follow around the given track, clearly they have encircled that yellow cross. And similarly, you can see this star is clearly encircled. However, the other two points, this star here, lies outside. And so the man is not going around that. And this green cross lies outside. The man is not going around that. Now, the other question was, what is the direction of the encirclement? Well, clearly, you can see from this arrow that in this particular case, we're going clockwise. So you have a clockwise encirclement. Now, what we want to do next is just confirm a few details, like how do we decide the direction of the encirclement, um, and how do we decide if there is indeed an encirclement or not. So what you can do is imagine yourself, now I'm not much of an artist, but imagine yourself sitting on a chair, there you are, sitting on a chair here and you imagine that's a revolving chair and what you're going to do is you're going to look at let's say this person in the car and you're going to watch what happens as they follow the specified track now if you do that you'll see these dotted lines show you the way that you look and what's key about these dotted lines is you'll see that you've got a change in angle which changes through a complete 360 degrees. So in other words, you're sat on the chair and you are going to complete a full revolution. It's also clear that in this particular case, you're going to complete a revolution in an anti-clockwise direction. Now, alternatively, if you are sat on a chair where this purple star is. What you would find is first you would look this way and then if you follow these dotted lines these are showing the way that you would look and you would see once you get to this bottom one you would start now moving back up again. So what you're doing on this chair is you're oscillating backwards and forwards but you're always ending up back in the same place. So you'll see you haven't gone all the way around. Now a similar way to look at it you'll see I've put a little picture of a thief inside this circle. So let's circle him. Here he is. And here's the question. Can this thief escape without cutting the string? So if you imagine this low size being a string, and clearly they cannot. And that means they are encircled by the string. They cannot escape without cutting it. Now here's a slightly more difficult one, just to get you to think. What if you got this trajectory here, given by this blue line? How many times are you encircled, and in what sense? So first, we're going to need to add some arrows all the way around this blue circle, just to make sure we don't make silly mistakes. You see, I've put lots and lots of arrows all the way around. So the question is, how many times are you encircled? So should we start with this yellow one here. Now you can see the yellow one is essentially encircled like this. Okay, so what this gives you is one encirclement clockwise. Okay, I'm going to try an experiment, see if we can get some green. Alright, so it's worked. So now this green one here, how are they encircled? Well, what you'll see is there's an encirclement here, but there's also this encirclement 
here. And so what you've got for green is you've actually got two clockwise. OK, we'll get rid of that. Next then, let's try this star one here. How many encirclements have you got here? Well, hopefully you can follow and you can see essentially you've got that, which is one anti-clockwise. And then finally, we need to do this purple star here. Now this purple star is actually not as obvious as you might think, because what I can do is I can take this bit of the string here and I can bend it to make it do this. Now, if I just rub out the other bit so we can see, when I've bent it to do that, what you will see is that I can now escape like this. OK? So the star can escape by following that route. And so, in fact, it does not lie inside the string at all. And if you find the net phase change for that star, you will find it's zero. So in other words, there are no encirclements for that one. OK, so here are the questions we need to answer. When is the point inside? Can you stretch and move the Nyquist plot so that the minus one can escape without crossing the Nyquist? And if you can, it's not encircled. And if you do cross the Nyquist to escape, you obviously are encircled. And the total number of crossings is the number of encirclements. So for example, if I go back to this previous one and look at this, this one here, you'll see to escape, it had one crossing here and another crossing here. So I could work out there was two encirclements. Now, a number of examples will demonstrate how encirclements may be counted and also the significance of a factor being left half plane or right half plane. And in the next video, we'll then show how these are used with Nyquist diagrams. So first then, encirclements of the origin by S plus A. So what I'm going to do first is plot my decontour. Here it is. It's a very crude decontour. All right, and then I'm going to plot next to it the mapping, which is S plus A. And what you're going to get, oops, sorry, I thought I'd change the colour there, S plus A. You'll get something like this. Now, forgive the sketches being crude, it's good enough. And what we want to know is, is the origin, there it is, encircled or not? And it should be fairly clear in this particular case that the origin is not encircled. All right, And therefore, you have no encirclements for S plus A. What about a factor 1 over S plus A? Well, we've plot plotted the mapping here, and I'll add the arrows. And now what I need to do is complete my Nyquist diagram. So I can do this bit. That bit's easy. And then I'll need to use the right-hand turns to do the bit at the origin. And if I do my right-hand turns and exaggerate it a bit, just make it a bit bigger so you can see what's happening. So I've put those arrows the wrong way there, haven't I? That was a bit careless. There we go. So what can you see? If I mark the origin with a red dot, then clearly it's not inside. It's outside this loci. And therefore, you have no encirclements. Now, let's relate this back to a phase change. So what we're going to do is, again, draw our decontour, or our shifted um, decontour. We'll draw, draw S plus A. And what we want to do is look and see what happens to the phase as S follows the decontour. So there's S plus A. And I want to know what happens to the phase. So I'm going to sketch that on a diagram here. I'm going to mark a phase of 90 and a phase of minus 90. So let's imagine you're starting all the way down here. So what's the phase? What's that phase there? So we start at minus 90. As we move up the decontour, you see the phase goes up to, say, minus 45, goes up to 0, goes up to 45, goes up to 90. And then, I'll draw these dotted lines. What happens to the phase? It comes all the way down again. So what do you notice? You end where 
you start. So there is no net change in phase, so there are no encirclements. And you can see that from this red line, you see it goes up and back. So it always ends where it starts, so there's no net change. Now, just for completeness, what we'll do is we'll show you what happens if we put a different point. So let's take a point here. And now let's see what happens with the phase for this point. So we go down there, and you see it's pretty close to minus 90. And what we're going to do is follow these phases, and I'll draw a black line in the middle so you can see what happens. OK, here we've got a phase of plus 180. And then as we go up this direction here, you'll see the phase goes down to 90. Then it goes down to 0. And then you'll see we're going this way around, going this way around. And you'll see it goes down to minus 90 and minus 180. And what do you notice? You don't finish where you start. You finish in a different place. And you have a full 360 degree change in the phase when you're encircled. Whereas when you're not encircled, the net change in phase is zero. So no net change in argument is equivalent to no encirclement. A 360 degree change is one encirclement. What happens then if we have multiple left half plane factors? Well, now we can use the phase argument. We can see if g is s plus 1 times s plus 2, then the argument of g is the argument of s plus 1 plus the argument of s plus 2. And therefore, the encirclements of the origin by g <coughs> must be equal to encirclements by s plus 1 plus encirclements by s plus 2, because we're just adding the phases. Now, clearly, in this particular case, we're going to get 0, because we've got no encirclements from s plus 1 and no encirclements from s plus 2. Now, similarly, we could look at something like this, g equals s plus 1 over s plus 2, and now the phase argument is this. Oops. Didn't let me draw in the line there. Now the phase argument is this, the argument of s plus 1 minus the argument of s plus 2, but clearly we're getting a 0 from both, so we get 0. And just to reinforce the point, what if we got something like this? 1 over s plus 1 times s plus 0.5, and you'll see the argument of g is now minus the argument of s plus 1, minus the argument of s plus 0.5, and clearly you get no encirclements from this one, no encirclements from this one, and so the total encirclements are zero. Now, if you plot the Nyquist diagram, and you want to confirm this to yourself, here's the Nyquist diagram, and let's put in the mirror image a bit crudely, and the key thing is, when I add in my right-hand turns and exaggerate a bit, you're going to get something a bit like this. Okay, And again, you see it manages to avoid the origin. The origin is not inside, so you have no encirclements. So an interim summary. Any combination of left half plane factors, the Nyquist diagram in circumference of the origin are zero. And this follows from the additive property of phases. However, you can, if you want, produce the Nyquist diagrams and do this for yourself, but it's far easier just to use the additive property of phases and say, if you get zero from an individual factor, adding all the factors together, you're still going to get zero. Now then, what happens <coughs> if I have a right half plane factor, something like S minus B? So again, let's do our decontour. So we stick our decontour in here. There it is, rather crudely done. And let's imagine what happens if we subtract B from this. We're going to get a decontour that looks a bit like this, where this point here is minus B. And clearly, you can now see that the origin is inside. So you get 1, and the key thing is you get a clockwise encirclement. Hopefully that's obvious from this. So a factor s minus b gives a clockwise encirclement. Similarly, we could look at factors like 1 over s minus b. Well, here's the Nyquist diagram here. And if again I draw my mirror image to complete it, and then add my right-hand turns, which you're going to do, I've exaggerated a bit so you can see it. It gives you a dimple a bit like this. And what can you see? You can see now the origin is inside. 
So in other words, you have one encirclement, and which direction is it? You can see it's anti-clockwise. So we're doing this quickly because it's the same as the left half plane, except the opposite finding. So we've got multiple right half plane factors. So something like g equals s minus 1 times s minus 2. Then clearly, the argument of g is the argument of s minus 1 plus the argument of s minus 2. And therefore, the encirclements by g must be the encirclements by s minus 1 plus the encirclements by s minus 2. Because you remember, an encirclement is a phase change of 360 degrees. So we get 360 degrees from each factor. So in this particular case, you would get two encirclements. OK, so encirclements of the origin by g must be two, and they will be clockwise, because these are zero factors. If you would have multiple right half-plane factors in the denominator, like this, you'll notice your argument is minus the argument s minus 0.1 minus the argument s minus 0.05. So you won't be surprised to say I'm expecting two anti-clockwise encirclements. And if you want to see that from the Nyquist diagram, let's um, put on arrows and you'll see where do we get this two from. So if I add my right hand turns, OK, so I turn right here and you're going to get this big sort of loop around like this. Sorry if it's uh, exaggerated a bit so you can see what's going on and you can see now that that red point has got two encirclements. So right half plane denominators give you clockwise, sorry anti-clockwise, you'll see that here, you've got an anti-clockwise encirclement. So encirclements of the origin on G here is two anti-clockwise because there was two right half plane poles. So an interim summary, for every right half plane zero, there's a clockwise encirclement, and for every right half plane pole, there's an anti-clockwise encirclement. However, because we're adding phases, these effects can cancel. So look at this. What do you see? You see I have a right half plane zero, and I have a right half plane pole. So I'm going to get a clockwise, or a plus one from this, and an anti-clockwise, or a minus 1 from this, and what you'll find is plus 1 minus 1 equals 0. So the total would be 0. So here's the Nyquist diagram for this particular system. And you'll see now, if I complete this particular Nyquist diagram, if I add my right-hand turns, and what do you notice? You notice the origin is outside. It's not encircled because the two right half plane factors have cancelled. So conclusions. We've introduced the concept of encirclements and for, for this video the focus was on encirclements of the origin. We will change that in the next video. We've shown by example that left half plane factors do not contribute encirclements whereas right half plane zeros give you a clockwise encirclement and right half plane poles give you an anti-clockwise encirclement. The next video is going to show how this insight can be used to give a very powerful closed-loop stability criteria.